Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic out there. So, today on the podcast, does the ears of the pilots pop in the same way as they do for the passengers? And do we have any special techniques to have to keep that from happening? Stay tuned. All right, guys, so this is a question that I'm getting surprisingly often, but I do understand that most of you guys who are flying regularly have this problem, and that's the problem with the ears popping. Right, the way that the pressurization uh, system works in a modern airliner is that uh, there's no pressurization as we're taxiing, but as soon as we are setting takeoff thrust and we're starting to roll down the runway, the aircraft starts to actually pressure even before we leave the runway. So the aircraft is pressurized down a little bit. That's when you will probably start feeling that there's something weird with the pressurization in your ears. And then as we take off, the, um, the aircraft calculates a, a cabin climb rate that will be approximately, uh, it will be similar, but much, much lower than the aircraft's proper climb rate. And it will climb the cabin up to about 8,000 feet, okay? We will be climbing all the way up to potentially 41,000 feet, but the cabin will not go higher than 8,000 feet. Now, 8,000 feet is still a big difference for the ears, okay? So, if you have a minor cold, for example, your ears will pop, okay? Now, there are several ways to stop that from happening. And if you're, um, if you're a professional pilot, like, like I am and like we are, uh, you will start to get used to it, okay? But what we do basically is more or less the same as you guys are doing. I know people are using chewing gums or something to suck on or something. What we do is we try to manually open those station tubes. Those are the tubes that are connecting the inner ear to your throat, okay? And you do it by kind of moving your jaw forward and, and tightening the muscles in here. Um, we, we tend to get quite good at doing that. And if we have a very, very light cold, then we tend to you know, we do that continuously during the climb and during the descent, and that it keeps the ears from going, you know, from getting that real pain that I'm guessing that you're thinking about. Um, what we also always carry, and this is something that I really recommend for you guys, is some kind of nose spray. Because if you have a light call, it might not be enough for you to even consider staying home from work, but it still might be enough to block those station tubes. Well then, this can be a real lifesaver. Uh, because it will kind of widen the, uh, both the, the throat and the sinuses and everything and it might be the difference between being able to equalize the pressure in your ears and not being able to do so. So always carry one of these in your bag, uh, that's something that I highly recommend and this is the biggest tip for you guys and something that, that I cannot overemphasize the, uh, the importance of. If you have a cold, if you feel that you have problems with your ears, stay home. It's much better to call yourself um, sick, to be home for a couple of days, rest yourself properly, than to go and try and end up bursting your eardrums. Because that can actually happen if you go up and you cannot equalize from 8,000 feet and down. Because normally, the problem is not while climbing. Because while climbing, since the pressure is going down, you kind of lower the, uh, the lights. Uh, sorry, lower the, um, uh, the pressure. But it's when you're going down, it's when you're descending that the problem will come, okay? So stay home if you feel sick. And as always, guys, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, I hope you're following me on Facebook, on Instagram, and I hope you get the app, the Mentor Aviation app, and uh, join up and discuss things in the, uh, in the chat forum. For now, I'm wishing you all a absolutely fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.